Щиро дякую. 22 березня 2023 року, відповідно, 15 годин в Україні, ми з вами розпочинаємо нашу лекцію в рамках міжнародних науково-педагогічних стажувань, які відбуваються на базі Балтійської міжнародної академії. Сьогодні ми будемо з вами спілкуватися на тему «Емоційний інтелект. Як розпізнати емоції та керувати ним». Спікером буде Гершин Бреслі, доктор психологічних наук, доцент Балтійської, Балтійська міжнародна академія. Щоб не витрачати час на е, наше заняття, е, не забрати час в нашого заняття, я із задоволенням передаю слово спікеру. Е, please speak. Uh, thank you very much. I'm associate professor of Baltic International Academy, but it's it doesn't matter. Um, I think it's it's not so important such details. Um, well, uh, today we will discuss emotional regulation and emotional intelligence and how it works. Um, it's um, I have file. I try to present you these materials but um, at the moment it I am not sure that you can see these these um, slides of my file uh, but I will um, send you these materials um, that you can in more details later to see these analyze and uh, answer on these questions at the end of these file uh, well um the first one i will propose classification of all emotional phenomena in this field of psychology um, and um, i will propose two criteria that you can find in my book psychology of emotion published in in um this uh, publishing house smissel um and um available available to my regret only in the russian language um and uh, there are two main criteria how we can classify and differentiate emotional phenomena one of them is how long is this emotional process it can be short enough as, for example, emotion of fear or anger. Uh, and it could be very uh, lifelong phenomena as, for example, the love or jealousy or uh, something else as hate. Um, for example, today in, in your country is very um, tremendous uh, events war and aggression from from russia and surely it um, allows uh, people hate uh, not only to this army soldiers putin but for many other uh, inhabitants of russia uh, and it can be many many uh, lifelong time uh, and i think it it will be continued many many years to my regret um and um, there it's first criteria these short short time events as our emotions with concrete particular subject matter and Next one criteria of this classification is um, what, how important it is. Is it uh, this, this uh, focus of our attention and what's main feature in this moment, or it's some background and, and phone? Uh, on that we can we can understand. Uh, all other things around us. 
And according to these two criteria, we can divide emotional phenomenon group of discrete emotions as, as fear, anger, and surprise, uh, and many, many other, uh, resentment, for example. And uh, this sentiment as uh, the love, uh, jealousy, and um, hate, um and uh, next uh, differentiation this is discrete emotions and such uh, things as our moods and states now, for example uh, depression it's uh, lifelong but it's uh, only um, mood that that influence on all our actions in depression, as we know very good, we uh, cannot work productively and we cannot find new object of interest. We try to use only, only simplest our technologies of action. Um, but um, Surely, in the uh, more positive mood, we can we can do uh, different things, but sometimes it's connected, linked to some relaxation condition. Um, and this, um, in this group of emotional phenomena, we can find uh, all these um, physical conditions as. For example, we are tired. We worked physically or intellectually and we are tired. And surely this influence on our, uh, this uh, organize our emotional form of our activities, a more or less um, effective, more or less ineffective, or sometimes you understand that a uh, positive emotional form can uh, relax us and we are not so attentive in this moment to some events, to some arguments when we discuss some issues. Well, next one. Um, we can say that uh, about the function of our emotional field. Emotion um, play the very important role in our mind. Uh, for example, uh, we can say that uh, emotion represent us potentially topical cognitive content for us and uh, emotion uh, give us possibility, appropriate mobilize of the body to particular action. In the same time, uh, emotion, um, if we speak about self-regulation, especially about self-regulation, um, emotion in, ensure the transfer of, of significant outcomes of activity to the level of motivational variables. It means that we can accept some um, positive events or negative events, positive events can influence on our uh, next activity. We know classical Thorndike law of effect. When uh, our actions are successive, it's higher probability that in the future we will uh, repeat these actions. And uh, otherwise, if, if uh, it's failure, we try to escape from this direction of activity. Uh, and this, uh, in this way, um, emotions ensure us these uh, changes this exception of uh, some um, successive uh, activities and uh, this uh, neglect uh, of uh, some failures, some uh, unsuccessive 
uh, actions and communications with other persons. Um, from the other side, um, speaking about um, external regulation, it's uh, really contacts with other persons. It's first of all, communicative influence on other person moods, thoughts, and goals. Um, for example, as, as I try at the moment to influence, not on your mood maybe, but mainly on your um, this understanding of uh, emotional processes and events. And um, not only communicative influence, but the correction of own moods, thoughts, and goals in the process of interaction, because our interaction can influence, I can influence on you, and you can influence on me in the same time. And um, I will ask you uh, what you think about about this function of emotions. Do you understand uh, what was uh, said at the moment? Do you understand these uh, two types, internal uh, self-regulation and external regulation of emotions? Is it understandable? Uh, that first group is is uh, when I am alone without uh, interaction with other people and external regulation is our interaction and my influence on you and you influence on me. And without your background, without your feedback, uh, it's uh, not easy for me to understand if my text was understandable at all. Uh, Svetlana, what what you think about? Is it understandable what I say about inter internal and external regulation of emotions? Do you hear me? Um, I am not sure about, um, Alexei, uh, wrote and Marina, okay, Dikuyu. Okay, thanks. I see you. I understand you very well. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very important for me <laughs> to get your feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, um, next one is uh, this understanding of uh, this uh, emotion at all. Uh, in uh, 1987, Lane and Schwartz interpreted ability to recognize and describe emotion in oneself and others as a cognitive skill. There are uh, discussion about can we uh, in what field it's better uh, to take uh, this uh, emotional intelligence in cognitive field or in emotional field it's not easy because it's uh, we combine this from the one side these uh, abilities from emotional field and from the other side we use this to solve some some problems some more or less complicated tasks. Um, and it means bet uh, because it, it is between between two big fields in psychology. And there are, from the beginning, uh, psychologists who uh, begin the use this uh, concept, uh, you know who is it uh, in 
1990s, it was uh, uh, Mayer and Salovey, and later Goleman continue this using this emotional intelligence. Goleman more um, more often use uh, social intelligence, and before that, um, there are uh, Gardner. Um, American scientists, two American psychologists who used this uh, concept of social intelligence. Um, social intelligence is a little wider than emotional intelligence. Uh, because in um, uh, social intelligence, there are many skills for group work. These management skills uh, these uh, skills of, of uh, understanding and so on, they are not only emotional uh, processes, but, uh, but emphasized effectiveness of social interaction more. Um, you understand that Go Goleman very popular books, they have edited in many, many languages, and translated in many languages. Um, and um, he was very popular. He was more um, this uh, promoter than than uh, researcher. And Mayer Solovey, they are uh, real researchers. And um, I um, got from Solovey many, many interesting texts. Um, you know that uh, in uh, 20 years ago, Mayer, Salovey, and Carlose distinguished the ability model from mixed models. Ability models conceptualize emotional intelligence as a set of mental skills that can be assessed with performance tests. And the first comprehensive performance test of emotional intelligence was the multi-factor Emotional intelligence uh, scale, Mayer, Caruso, and Salovey in 1999 was published this test. And it became uh, very um, popular in many, many countries because uh, uh, psychologists were tired from, from uh, intelligence tests that uh, only that uh, give us information only about cognitive processes. Uh, people uh, understand that it depends not only about our, our uh, cognitive processes, about uh, um, this, this um, object of our thinking and object of our perception, but it depends on our emotions. And because our emotions reflect our needs. Um, and for us, it's more important because it depends of we're interested to satisfy our needs. And emotions dot us this information about uh, how we are satisfied with one or other thing. Um, and really, um, this test become become very popular. But later, they um, uh, change this test and uh, elaborated new test, MSC uh, EIT uh, test, and it become um, very uh, popular. They they uh, sell this test to big uh, American corporation that. Uh, he is specialized in, in elaboration and sailing of these um, psychological tests. Um, as a performance test, uh, this test assesses the ability to manage emotions. For example, uh, with vignettes describing particular emotional problems, asking participants to rate a number of possible actions on a scale ranging from very ineffective to very effective. And the responses are evaluated through a comparison of responses made by either 
expert or normative sample. Do you know what it means, normative sample? Normative sample, it's uh, a big, huge amount of participants uh, that represent different social groups, uh, different by uh, gender, different by age, different by location, place of living, um, and we represent uh, these different people who represent different social groups in society. It means normative uh, sample. It means that there are samples that represent all society. Um, yes, and... Um, these uh, mixed models, um, in contrast, are based primarily on popular direction of emotional intelligence, according Goleman books that published in 1995 and 1998, and include three classes of construct: perceived emotional, um, perceived emotional abilities competencies and personality traits. Uh, for instance, but on uh, emotional intelligence scale, 1997 published, included the perceived ability to handle relationships and traits such as optimism in his model of emotional intelligence. And um, the, this um, scale represent four different abilities. Its ability of perceiving emotion. It means that we can identify of emotions uh, looking on the uh, person face in designs, in music, in stories, in movies. For example, in in uh, a movie, we can uh, hear that it's the music looks that something something will be very bad uh, for for actors in the movie, um, and um, we feel this this uh, um, specific uh, by music. Uh, aroused, aroused uh, this tension, uh, inner tension for person. We uh, maybe we cannot uh, understand. It's not in our consciousness, but uh, our organism react because emotion involve all our organism in the process. We, it's uh, emotional reaction as James wrote many years ago that it is our um, organism reaction first of all and only later we can analyze these these emotional phenomena as as for example fear or anger or something else um, next one um, using emotion how we use uh, our emotions how we can um, uh, something uh, accept or uh, reject what's uh, uh, decision making on the basis basis of emotion uh, it means that um, uh, can we say on the basis of our emotion that we like something or dislike we will buy one thing in the story or other thing uh, when, when, uh, for example, you will go with with your husband on or wife in the stories, um, um, and um, one of you propose to other person uh, to choose something and propose particular particular thing uh, for choosing, and you say no, no, 
I don't like it. I don't like it. It it means that you um, that it's uh, your emotion function as basis for your decision. Uh, is it understandable uh, the second function of emotions? Decision making on the basis of emotion. Uh, it's it's uh, not only scale of like and dislike, but like and dislike its main, uh, most important scale for decision making, because in the uh, shopping in the shopping process, it's it's main. It's not price of the thing. It's not color. Something color is important feature of thing but it's not it's not main sorry uh, um, uh, well um we understand that it it is um, um in a concrete uh, moment of time it's it's not easy but uh, uh main criteria for us is is uh, uh, really really this one like and dislike and this acceptance or non-acceptance on the basis of this like or dislike um and uh, uh, surely we we try to uh, accept or uh, non-accept and it is uh, main reason for decision at the moment maybe in perspective we later can analyze our choice or the lack of our choice and to say something different um, we can change our opinion really but at the moment uh, emotion uh, work as as exception or non-exception only at the moment uh, next one is um, understanding of emotions uh, understanding of emotions it means that we um, can understand what means why why our uh, person in with what we are in communication process is angry uh, we cannot understand uh, why why he or she is angry and this uh, anger uh, subject matter is our actions or something else these events outside our communication process it's very important to understand uh, this uh, is uh, the reason of this um, anger inside communication process or outside uh, and this is a function of emotion of emotional intelligence emotional intelligence help us um, ensure us this uh, correct uh, understanding of what's reason of this emotion um the next one um uh, this fourth function of emotional intelligence according Salovey, uh mayer and caruso is managing of emotion uh, managing of emotion it means that we try to be open that uh, when when we have this opportunity to be open self-disclosure in communication and um, not be so open in the situation when it's it's not so so good can arouse complicated things uh, difficulties in the future and so on uh, and this understanding of uh, our expression and 
may be consequences of our expression is understandable in differences of gender uh, reaction with anger. Uh, many um, psychological uh, studies show us that um, um, that uh, men are higher than women by anger, but only if we analyze this out anger, but not inner anger. Um, we have some scales, for example, Charles Spielberger scale of anger. Uh, and in this scale, there are differentiation of two types of anger. It's anger expressed uh, outside and anger that existed inside. Um, and this inside anger is uh, higher uh, in, in the woman group by this data of this study. It means they tried, didn't, they tried, don't show um, us these, these uh, emotions because it's not so good for women um, to show this, this emotion. And aggression to the same. Um, this negative emotion, uh, the more brutal emotion that are intensive enough uh, there are some norms that it's not so so good for women, but it's normal for men more. They um, represent more uh, men's behavior. And um, this, um, sometimes uh, this uh, thinking about that uh, can, can give us these, these uh, differences in expression. Uh, men have the same emotions as, as women. There are no differences in, in experience, but there are differences in expression because from the beginning, from the childhood, uh, their parents uh, emphasize that uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, child, uh, what gender you have, if you are a girl, that you can uh represent and can express all your emotions and they uh, this expression is uh, acceptable for for parents for all other people but for boys it's not the same it's tiny uh, девчонка why 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 you should demonstrate these uh these emotions yeah, yes uh, you don't like, please, please calmly be, uh, show that you are strong. Uh, but you know that, that it's really not uh, the same in reality, but we try to limit these uh, boys' emotions from the childhood, from the first uh, year. Uh, and it, it 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 is not only in in uh, Latvian or in Ukrainian uh, societies. In all societies, we can find these uh, limitations of uh, of uh, boys' uh, emotionality, emotional expression mainly. Uh, and we should take into account the the big uh, difference that that from the childhood will start it because there are some genetical differences between um, and um, with with boys there are more problems in the beginning too uh, no any later um, later too not only in the beginning uh, next one uh, when we um, discuss uh, emotional intelligence. Surely we should mention uh, the concept of stress by Celia, and this um, um, because it uh, gives us an um, understanding of the process of uh, emotional regulation. That on the stressor we have 
first of all, LM reaction, later resistance, more or less stable stage, and exhaustion on the next stage. Um, and we can use many psychological techniques, especially on the resistance stage, when we have resources to overcome these stressors, uh, these um, um, circumstances, negative circumstances. It means that uh, if person is in depression, you cannot, you cannot um, influence on this person to say about about values, about necessity, about how important it is for society. Uh, it doesn't work. Um, but on the stage of resistance, when there are some resources to overcome, uh, you can you can influence and you can change some some opinions, some attitudes uh, to the object. What what you need to change. Um, the next one, coping process. You know, Folkman and Lazarus. Um, they um, differentiated uh, uh, coping strategies on two groups. This is problem-oriented coping. Uh, problem-oriented coping, we, when we try struggle with, for example, uh, our enemy or uh, our uh, a uh, person who who pretend on on our resources, on our place, and so on, uh, we can ask help from other person, ask for social help, um, and uh, we can uh, elaborate our plans, programs, projects, and so on. And there are emotion-oriented coping by Folkman and Lazarus. Uh, emotion-oriented coping means self-control, distancing, positive reprisal, or acceptance of responsibility, or escaping. I don't like to see uh, Strauss' reaction. Uh, it can be emotional-oriented coping. It's type I don't see and I don't feel. Um, and um, uh, later, Stone and Neil elaborated alternative measure consisted from open questions on problem solving at current day and uh, were selected eight coping styles. It is distraction. Um, you, uh, for example, in when we try to photo, photograph uh, children, дети посмотрите там птичка. Сейчас птичка вылетит. Yeah, it's uh, examples examples that uh, uh, of distraction. As as way how we can overcome this stressful situation, and this is a, a redefinition of situation. It can be direct action uh, against catharsis. Uh, fifth uh, um, is acceptance of this situation as objective. Six, the search of social support. Uh, seventh, relaxation. And eight, religion. Religion can be effective way for coping for some people, not for all people, but for some people it works. Um, and the last one I will mention, Carolyn Sarni. Um, Finnish uh, American psychologist. She wrote one book. I like this book uh, very well. Um, 
it is i will show this book it looks um and she wrote many many ideas and many uh, skills that can improve our emotional intelligence and our emotional competence at the moment i have no time to discuss these uh, caroline sarnia ideas and data in more details thank you very much for your attention and maybe you have questions okay i will ask if, if possible yes um, um, as i know for that in psychiatry um, um, the depression is uh, interpreted as the biochemical problem uh, not as an emotional problem uh, could you explain it or, or give some i don't know uh, some examples um, uh, that are different to this state? Um, yes, um, uh, surely that it's mainly a mental process and uh, chemical changes in our organism are secondary. Mm -hmm. It's consequences of our emotional experience, uh, mainly. Surely um, it's easy for psychiatrist uh, to give us drugs uh, to change this condition of our organism on this is uh, can can allow our uh, nervous system for for different activities to hire to improve our resources physical resources uh, because depression means this a negative influence on our organism that uh, diminish our resources and you can uh, using drugs to improve these resources but it's only short uh, reaction um, it's not decision lifelong decision is decision only on the short time you should change mental processes um, to improve this uh, functioning in the lifelong time time period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, other questions. Um, thank you very much. I I hope that we will meet next time, and next time I will um, more answer on more questions and to, to discuss some important issue in more details uh, thank you uh, um, uh, good day for you and and um, a win in this this terrible war um, slava ukraine right, slava thank you for amazing Thank you. Lecture. Yes, thank you for lecture. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Sounds a lot. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.